Welcome again. Today we consider topic six, the issue of global warming, as we describe the role of greenhouse gases in maintaining global temperature. Describe how human activities add to greenhouse gases, and describe qualitatively the potential effects of increased mean global temperature. The planet Earth, the blue planet, third from the Sun, with Venus, second from the Sun, and Mars, fourth from the Sun. A closer look at Venus would reveal a hot, inhospitable planet with a runaway greenhouse effect. A similar look at Mars would show a planet with a very cold, hostile environment and a very thin atmosphere. Planet Earth is just right. Very much like the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And it is because of this Goldilocks effect that life as we know it has come to exist on this planet Earth. And the atmosphere of the planet Earth that thin blanket that surrounds the blue sphere has a key part to play in sustaining the temperature of this world at an average of 15 degrees Celsius. Electromagnetic radiation arrives on the Earth in a variety of frequencies and wavelengths. Ultraviolet or shortwave radiation from the Sun arrives on the Earth and is reflected into space as long wave or infrared radiation. This source of heat would be quickly lost were it not for this blanket that surrounded the Earth, its atmosphere. A significant component of this atmosphere is water vapor being added to the atmosphere and taken away via the water cycle. Water is the most significant greenhouse gas able to trap some of this infrared radiation and prevent it from going out into space. But water molecules have a short-lived existence in the atmosphere quickly condensing as rain and then evaporating again as water vapor to form clouds. There are a range of other molecules, however, whose existence are much longer in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is one such molecule, but there is a list of other gases whose concentrations in the atmosphere may be small, but their contribution to the warming of the Earth is not to be underestimated. Wetlands are a source of some of these other gases. Rice grown in wet fields is another source of this significant contributor to the greenhouse effect. Cattle farming. These ruminants harbor mutualistic bacteria in their guts and this is another source of this potent greenhouse gas. The manufacture of natural gas is yet another source of this greenhouse gas. Landfills. Though they release significant amounts of carbon dioxide, they also release large amounts of this other gas. And because methane is flammable, it's important that landfills are properly managed with this hazard being controlled and the gas being vented into the atmosphere in a controlled manner to prevent threats of fire. As this caption shows, methane comes from a range of sources. 
Some of these sources include the natural environment, but there are several others which result from anthropogenic human activities, with ruminants referring to cattle farming, rice paddies feeding large populations throughout Asia in particular, biomass burning going on in many parts of the world, landfills receiving waste from the burgeoning population of the planet, coal mining still the most significant source of energy on planet Earth, and gas production. All of these anthropogenic activities are contributing to the production of methane. The list of other gases whose concentrations are small but significant include methane, sulfur hexafluoride, which is used in electrical work, HCFC, the much vaunted and talked about solution to managing the depletion of the ozone layer, nitrous oxide from vehicle emissions, and of course, the very well-known carbon dioxide. Large amounts are produced from natural events like naturally occurring fires, volcanic eruptions. Here it is placed at the bottom of the list because molecule for molecule when compared to those above it, it is the weakest contributor to trapping infrared radiation. It is the weakest contributor to the greenhouse effect. And by extension, it is the weakest contributor to the anthropogenic enhancement of the greenhouse effect referred to as global warming. Carbon dioxide, though the weakest contributor molecule for molecule, still remains in the limelight and at center stage because its concentration in the atmosphere far exceeds these other molecules. More and more cars run on the streets of planet Earth every day as population increases and as development increases. But cars and factories are not the only sources of carbon dioxide emissions from fossil fuels. The lights in our classroom, our computers, the air conditioners that cool us in the summer, and the heating systems that warm us in the winter. All of these consume large amounts of electrical energy, which in many countries come from the burning of coal, oil, and natural gas. The Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii. This atmospheric research station has become well known for the Keeling Curve. At Mauna Loa, the levels of carbon dioxide have been carefully monitored since the 1950s. And as this graphic shows, there has been a steady increase in the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide in parts per million over the last 50 years. An important consideration is why does the Keeling curve have these annual fluctuations? It correlated with this increase in carbon dioxide has been an increase in the consumption of fossil fuels, increased development and urbanization in most countries. Meteorologists have observed hurricanes like Katrina in 2005 occurring with greater force and happening with more frequency. Another threat from possible global warming is thermal heating of the oceans and melting of polar ice caps. These can possibly result in rise of sea levels. Rising oceans will put more areas of the world underwater, changing habitats, allowing mosquitoes to breed, for example, and threatening human health 
with insect-borne diseases. Other possible scenarios include shifting of the biomes, and with the shifting of the biomes, a change in the distribution of crop growing areas. What then are some options for managing these possible issues? The, the very fact that we label them possible issues means that unlike the case of depletion of the stratospheric ozone layer, the issue of global warming is one that is shrouded in much doubt and surrounded by increasing debate. Unlike the very successful Montreal Protocol, the Kyoto Protocol, which followed the Climate Change Convention of 1992, has been, for the most part, a failure. In our next lesson, we will consider some of the reasons to consider this map and search for its legend on Wikipedia and then return to the cost-benefit diagram at the end of 5.6 and think about a similar diagram for the issue of greenhouse gas reduction or managing the effects of possible global warming. Assuming that we take the precautionary principle and believe that global warming is a fact, then what are some strategies for managing the effects of global warming. Let's once again use our model to lay out a plan for managing yet another pollution issue.